Hello everybody, welcome to Clash of the Correspondents. My name's James and today we're unusually looking forward to a game of football between two teams that may happen twice in the space of two game weeks. Unconfirmed as yet, and I should clarify, we are pre-recording this podcast on Tuesday evening in advance of any formal announcement of fixture movements for the likely game week 35 double. Let me first introduce you to Adam Hopcroft, our Aston Villa correspondent. How are you, Adam? Yeah, really good, thanks, James. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And see, this is the problem with you two playing each other twice. I always introduce the home team first, and I've already forgotten that Sean is the home team. Let me introduce <laughs> you to Sean Norton, Norton at Spirit underscore Blues on Twitter, our Everton correspondent. How are you, Sean? All good, thanks, James. You good? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Um, as you're the home team, I will start with you. And I've, I've got a question for you, mate. So you've only won five home games this season in the Premier League. Can you still qualify for next season's Champions League? Um, <laughs> you're a bad man. <laughs> 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 uh, you know the answer. I, I get the sense from you, Sean, that you're not confident with what's happening with Everton at the moment. No. Well, we, say, we certainly won't be finishing in the top four, but... Even, you know, even finishing in the European spot now looks tough. Even, you know, sort of seventh for the, what's, what's it called? The Europa Conference. Conference. <laughs> <laughs> We're in battle now, Sean. <laughs> oh, it's like really attractive, isn't it? Of all the names they could have come up with. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it almost feels like a punishment to be in it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, Sean, I don't know if you you remember this, but the first time we ever mentioned the concept on the podcast and we thought it was going to be 3.45pm yeah. kickoffs on a Thursday, the team that I said would be the first team in it would be Everton. We said, let's just got Everton finishing seventh, written all over it. What, you, what you, you know what? what, what do you My punishment is but a place in Nexus Europa League, mate. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, oh, my oh, punishment, yeah. Sean, in, in, in the comeback for saying that to you is it's probably going to be my team, mate. It's probably going to finish seventh. <laughs> Why? Why do you? I don't understand why you're kind of giving yourself no chance on the end. I know you've got you've still got Man City to play at the end of the season, but Villa, West Ham, Villa again, Sheffield United, Wolves are all winnable, aren't they? Nah, not for us. <laughs> okay, maybe, why? Maybe for Man City, but not for us. Well, no, I get the problem's been inconsistencies this year, but if you take the the toughest fixture on papers, West Ham away, your away record record's been brilliant this season. We used to joke with you about Rex and T Rex, and Rex used yeah. to turn up away from home after the T Rex at Goodison. Yeah, and it's like the re- roles have reversed. You're on 52 points, six points behind Chelsea, with a game in hand, and you've got probably the best fixture list left of all the challengers because it, you've got the extra game. It's but it's but it's looked like that. It's looked like that for months, and that kind of. There's always there's always a game that quite quickly comes and you and you think oh if Everton win this then whatever and we invariably don't win <laughs> that match and and we just can't you know we just gone what six games before we got to win and and good teams don't go on spells like that at the at the business end of the season and everything just feels difficult so I mean I'm sure you two probably seen the highlights at the very least of the Arsenal game. And a lot of our matches have been like that, where it's really, really tight. And then sometimes we're on the right end of the win, and the other times, you know, we can see them and, and we lose. Um, and we're not, we're just not dominating games of football very, very often. We're just, you know, we're organised, tough to break down, and, and trying to just catch teams um, normally on the counter or from a set piece. And I think that's why the away record so much better than the home record. You know, the game coming up against Adams' team. I think it's perfect for them because they'll be able to just soak up the press. Well, there will even be that much pressure because we're not good at breaking teams down or playing a low block. And I think they'll just come, sit in, and they and they'll look to catch us. And it doesn't matter what defenders we play; that all, all our all our defenders are just riddled with inconsistencies. And invariably, you know this from the game against Tottenham. <laughs> you know we shoot ourselves in, in in our own foot. The opposition doesn't have to do too much because we'll we'll just gift wrap them something. Yeah, but the, the only reason you didn't win that night is because we had Harry Kane, mate. Let's let's be honest. You you would you would a better side. What do you feel, Adam, hearing all that from Sean on Everton before you're about to play him? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's it's interesting because I found Everton this season really difficult to predict. They obviously started like us. They started the season really well, 
I think they've got some great players. I think Ancelotti is the sort of manager that adjusts the tactics depending on the players who are available. Um, I think the fact he's got Hammers, Sigurdsson, Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison back. So he's going to have his, his best attacking players out. So I think it will be, I, I don't know, I think Everton have got more to play for than Villa at the moment. Um, but I do agree with him. I think the, I think, I fancy us more in the away fixture. And I'm sure Sean probably likewise than I do the home fixture. Yeah. Um, because I think Everton have been very, very good away. And I think Villa, Villa, to be fair, thought we played quite well away at Liverpool and we had chances and could have got something at that at that game. So um yeah, I, I think it's I think his analysis is good. And I'm I'm more interested in Everton as well about next season and where they can potentially go. Because it's been, like I said, it's been difficult to predict this season. I think and on the whole, Angelotti's done a done a good job there, uh, particularly as they've had key players out for um, long, long periods of time, but yeah, I, I, they've just been unpredictable. So, yeah, which isn't great for FPL. <laughs> What's the next, Sean? Then, in terms of going into next season, I mean, what do you want to happen in the summer? Because presumably, you're happy with the manager. You made some good signings last last summer in the likes of Allen and and yeah. Decore and and Adams right as well to highlight. You have had injuries at various stages yeah. as well, and obviously Hammers Rodriguez as well. What, what what's your expectations then in in next season going forward then if if you think this season which I think is a bit harsh to say it's possibly done what's your expectations going forward then yeah I'd like to, I'd like to think well you know we'll bring in another two or three in the summer of similar quality to what we brought in last summer and, and then that should you know kick us on that little bit more and then I think we'll be a bit more you know that that bit more realistically competitive next season in terms of being in and amongst amongst the Champions League chasing teams um it, it, just with a bit more a bit more conviction I mean the home games we'd have only had to have won you know one or two of those and, and we'd be right in there now is the away form going to be as good next season then you know probably not but the home form will almost definitely be better especially with the crowd being back as 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 long as obviously they are. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that the other shower over the road have, have had the similar issues, struggling at home. I think I think we're probably two of I mean, all, all all teams miss home fans, of course, but you always hear people talk about how intimidating Goodison and Anfield mm. can be. And I and I definitely think we've both, you know, suffered as a result. Um and, and then on the flip side, our away form's been good because of the way we set up. And there isn't that that fear factor there for our players. So one of the things that we've done over the years is, you know, we will we will under pressure, and that pressure isn't there now away from home. So I, I think we we can kick on. Um, the the players that we brought in in the summer for me were just that bit that bit better quality, known quality compared to what we were bringing in previously under Marcel Brands and Steve Walsh. Uh, you know, Awobi. Yeah, you know, Yeri Mina, that on paper the decent players, but you know we paid big, big money for them, and you know realistically, what what improvements have they given Everton? It's it, it's negligible if it, if anything at all, is it? So I, I think I think Carlo being there, he, he's very much the main man in terms of who, who we bring in. I definitely think he's he's got the final say, and you know who who better to judge a player's quality. Mm. Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah, I think there's a case to say that Everton are where they are and in a position potentially to change this year because of Carlo Ancelotti. That's how it feels. Because I feel like you've gone through periods where you, you missed Alan for a while and Decore was out for a while. Mm. And it, it's all just felt a little bit patched up. I mean, yeah. it's easy to say, I mean, the home games, to put it in context, it's five home wins. You won your first two as well. Yeah. So it's only three home wins since I think game week four. Four, I want to say, staggering for a team that's also won at Liverpool, won at Tottenham, won at Arsenal, drawn at Manchester United, yeah. and and uh, won at Leicester as well. Yeah, staggering. It's, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? But yeah, I was obviously lost at home to the likes of Fulham, yeah. Burnley, Newcastle all this year. Yeah. Staggering the differences in that. Do you think, Adam? Is is there anything? 
I guess it's kind of the never ending question that nobody can really answer on home and away form because you had a very good spell earlier in the season away from home with results mm. as well. It, is it just a sim- simplistic? It's kind of what Sean's saying again. The impact of fans not being there, plus also the, the pressure in away games. This feels like a day out. Just go and play football. You're not under pressure from opposition fans. Um, I felt certainly when when Tottenham played at Wembley that home games became so much harder for us because Wembley's obviously doesn't matter how many you've got there. It's not an intimidating atmosphere. And people treated it like a big game occasion because they were playing at Wembley. Yeah, exactly. Do, do you think there's, there's anything in the home and away results and could it last further once fans come back? I, th- I think psychologically, even though there's no fans there, I think teams do set up different at home to, to away. That there is a little bit more emphasis on trying to break teams down and attack. So I think the away matches do suit teams that um, want to sit back at, sit back and counter. I think in the, for some teams, I think no fans has helped them. Because um, I think the pressure, whether it's helped Villa or not, I don't know, but it's ta- it definitely takes the pressure off. Um, but I think I agree with what Sean's saying. I think it's those matches that are close and maybe it's nil-nil in the final 20 minutes or you're one nil down and you just, the crowd gets you, you know, um, can get you, can have such a big impact. But you, you're absolutely right. It's really difficult to, to, to say because you look at different leagues and there's been different impacts. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough to draw any, um, yeah, to draw any definitive conclusions, I think. And on yourselves, Adam, in terms of Villa at the moment, are you just, Floating through, I mean, we spoke to you before the, the Fulham game and I said to you, is it average without Grealish? And you said this probably being a kind to even say it's average without Grealish. How do you feel a, a few weeks on about the remainder of the season and, and how it's finishing yeah. up for yourselves? I think I'd, I'd still stick by what, what, what I said. Although I think from Fulham onwards, I think considering where we were, we've given an OK account of ourselves. So I thought the Fulham game... When we when we brought Keenan Davis and uh, Trezor Gay on the last 20, 20 minutes, I thought it was great. We were actually on the front foot, and I thought I thought that, you know we're joking our pop, but I thought Davis made a huge impact, and I think he does because he's quite quite good at good at putting himself about. I think against United, sorry, United you know, against City and Liverpool, City was a little bit disappointing that Cash stupidly got sent off. That was needless, and it really, it just the game was over at that point. I think we'd have had a We'd have made it would have made it interesting 10 v 11, although I still suspect the result would have been the same. Um, I thought Liverpool we played quite well. I thought that's just a good game, and you know both teams w- went for it. But we had chances. I mean, Trezeguet hit the post just before, you know, and 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 then obviously Liverpool score at the end. So I thought we 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 we, we did okay in that game. And um, what was it? And then more recently against West Brom, I think the fight back was brilliant. I think, you know, there, there was none of, I don't think either penalty was a penalty. I think they're both very, very soft. But I thought the last 20 minutes, just, for me, that showed we weren't on the beach, if, you know, for, because we really, really went for it. We you know we, we brought three forwards on. There was a proper, I and mean, there was no crowd for the derby. You know, Villa and West Brom play each other quite a bit in friendlies as well behind closed doors. So, um, I, I was just pleased that we constantly was wave after wave of attack, and I think we thoroughly deserved a, you know something from something from the game. I just think we just we do lack the quality without Grealish. I think he's third for chances created in the league, yet he hasn't played the last quarter of the season. It's mad. Uh, uh, he's, he, he's one of the best players in the league, and I think any team would miss him. Um, where Villa have been frustrating for me is we've been in a, a really good position in the sense that we can't get rele- we, we weren't going to get relegated this season for about I don't know 10 game 10 games yeah, earlier ago. even probably yeah and we've got an incredible youth team like a really really good youth team it was the per- you're never going to get as good an opportunity to to bring in some of these players the head of the likes of Ross Barkley I don't particularly like Troy I'm not I'm not a fan of him personally uh, you know, I just think that we've got some great players that we could play. I mean, Al Ghazi, uh, sorry, um, Al Mohamedi was playing right back the other night. We've got Kane Kessler, who is unbelievable. And I, I, they may have decided to, to to rest not playing because of the Youth Cup game tonight. I don't know, but it, it's frustrating. We've got one of the best um, 17-year-olds in the country in uh, Chuck Maker, who everybody is after. 
how can we not give him a game ahead of Ross Barkley? It's just, it's frustrating. Obviously, Dean Smith might know more, but I think we've missed that opportunity. Even if we're giving him 20 minutes off the bench, and, you know, why wouldn't you do it? Because that experience could be invaluable to them. Whereas the, the chances are um, these games next season, they might, they're going to um, probably matter a little bit more. Um, in the sense that it doesn't really matter what we do between now and the end of the season. Thank you, Adam, for dropping some names there that I've not heard of. I, I do like knowledge bombs getting dropped. I think part, part of the problem there with stuff like that is if you take the case of El Mohamedy, yeah. he obviously sits in back up for Cash every week, knows he's mm. never going to start, and then Cash gets suspended, so he thinks I'm going to play. So if he doesn't play, he's going to be knocking on the manager's door going, well, what am I doing here? So it's, it, it can be a difficult one to manage. I mean, my assumption going into the weekend will... Well, El- Elmer Hamid is the backup for Cash. He would obviously play. And like I would assume that Cash will, will come back into the team for the Everton game at the weekend. I mean, it's a difficult one to manage because I actually think in, in certain ways, the squad's become a little bit bloated in certain mm. areas. Like it feels like you've got a number of wide attacking players, for example. So if you've got a young kid who's trying to break in when you're trying to get past mm. El Ghazi, I know Trezeguet and Grealish are out at the moment, but El Ghazi, Trezeguet, Grealish, Traore, Barkley can play in wide areas. It's, it's quite difficult because those other players who are not in the team regularly, like, say, El Ghazi, who occasionally, when he's come in, looks all right, although he's got nothing to his game other than I'm going to hit the thing at goal, which could make him potentially a very good fantasy asset. It's going to be difficult in those areas where the squad's quite bloated for the kids I, I, to I'd get through. I agree with that. I think, it's even, for me, I, I think you're absolutely right. But I think even just to include them more in the squad and just 20 minutes off the bench, I think that was the... Agree. That was the opportunity. And particularly when a lot of the players you've mentioned haven't performed. I think El Mohamedi, I understand your point. I think he's out of contract in the summer and this is going to be it for him for the season. But um, I think that, again, that could have been a youth cup decision because they, they have been training with the first team. So We all saw that there's some talented players at the club. We saw that when he played Liverpool, right? Early yeah, in the season. Exactly, exactly. So we know there's some talented kids there at the club. I do have to ask you about Keenan Davis because I know this has been an ongoing thing on your yeah, podcast, yeah. The Green Arrow. Can you just tell everyone a little bit what the story is there? Do you know, because we do the podcast live, um, Fergie, who I podcast with, um, was talking for his wildcard team and he, he just read out Davis. I don't, and, and I think he was saying he was, he might have even dropped that he's essential because he frees up. A lot of money and he's a you know he'll occasionally come on for the one pointer but it's essential because what it allows you to do with your team and it was only like a throwaway comment and because we do it live the live chat went mad we've got people calling it comparing him with Messi, and um <laughs> you'll know from some of the stuff that you've done live sometimes it can just take over and it did and it was it was you know it was really really good fun but um i i must admit I actually quite like Keenan Davis. His, his record for Villa goals White is terrible, but so I think it's, it, 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 you know, he, he hadn't scored in like over 50 games recently. But what he does is he's so physical that he, and he I mean, he's just, everyone who trains with him says how strong he is. He causes problems. And I think for me, a solution for Villa, I wish he had more game time because. Um, if you look at it, he's only played 134 minutes this season. He's got an XG of 1.21 and an XA of 0.52. So, it, 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 but it, it's what he does because he actually, I mean, he's, he's, um, his physicality is, is, is incredible. And I think what I would do, I don't think Troy is doing it personally. And what I would probably do is, is start with the, with the injuries we've got, is play Algarzi on one side, Watkins on the other. And, and Davis through the middle because I think Watkins would benefit from playing a wide forward role because I think I think Davis is good enough to press and occupy the centre backs like Watkins does but I think where Watkins would really benefit is he's playing against the full back or in between the full back and centre half he get, he'll get more chances he'll get more space and I think he's he is a goal scorer as well so I think he, you know we see a lot of wide forwards get more space and get more chances and I think that's why. Um, you, you know, you get players. It's it's, it's not really a winger role anymore, is it? With the likes of what Salah, Mane, Sterling, etc., etc., do. And I think it's a little bit of a myth that if you play through the centre, you're always going to get more goals. I don't think that's I don't think that's the case anymore. Now, we've seen that with the likes of Salah and Sons yeah, and Mane. And, and what and what Kinsey played for Brentford, he, he actually started out wide, so it's not 
um, I, that's what I would do. I'd experiment and do something a little bit different. I think it's one of the main reasons he actually got the England call over Bamford is the fact that in the worst case scenario, you could play him in different positions. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Bamford's probably stationary as a, as a central striker. Can I ask on, on Davis then on a serious question? There will be people wild carding this week who are thinking 3 5 2. Davis or Brewster? Of Davis, 100%. I think the only danger for Davis is Wesley is back. But I, and I think Dean Smith seems to have his favourites and he's quite loyal. My, if I was manager, I would probably um, start Davis the weekend. I just think, I think he's played himself to, to have an opportunity. And, um, I think he's the sort of player. Well, you can tell all the squad were delighted for him when he's when he scored, and I think he gives that much to the team. It, it, where reason he's probably lost a little bit of momentum is he's been it, his career at Villa has been plagued by injuries as well. So I, I would like him to have a little bit of a running running the team with Watkins out with Watkins out wide because I just think I think um, our wide players just haven't done it so particularly since Grealish has been out. They've been average and then Tre- until Trezor Gay had the little little spell where he looked good and then goes and gets injured. Sure. So yeah, I, I think 4.2 bargain or 4.3, whatever he is. All right. Davis over Brewster, noted. Sean, I've got a trivia question for you. Oh. Who is, and you don't, I don't expect you to know the answer to this, by the way, who's Everton's oh. highest scoring FPL player in 2021? You can dive in as well if you want, Adam, if you think Sean's Ooh. struggling. Ilfie Sigurdsson. Correct. Should we be considering him on a nostalgia era at 6.9? 6.9, well, who's... Come on, Adam, help me out. Who's, who's better than 6.9? <laughs> uh, Jesse well, Lingard, got... for example. I think, I think Lingard. I think Lingard. Jota is... He... I, don't, I, I think he's... he's... He could get rotated, couldn't he? But yeah, Jota's 6.9. Zaha's 7.1. Greenwood. Oh, I think... Right. I, do you know what? I'd, the only, I mean, obviously... You see, you think Lingard, don't you? But the thing, the thing with, with, with fantasy football, I, I think a lot of it is about you've got to get on players at the right time. Yeah, you? And, exactly. You know, I, I think at this stage of the season, it, it's worth going... I'd go against Lingard. I'd go with someone else. I mean, I'm not saying that would be guilty Sigurdsson. But... Well, no, I'm just saying, again, kind of in relation to Davis, is people are going to be wild carding this week. And I think those that do are going to find Villa and Everton unavoidable in their faults because the fixture, because you're playing each other, the fixture's not too bad this yeah. weekend. We think you're going to walk into your rearranged game being added to 35, which will give Villa... United at home yeah. and Everton at home and give Everton West Ham away and Villa away. And they're not the best doubles, don't get me wrong. No. But then to cover the what we think would be four teams blanking in 36, Villa travelled to Palace and Everton have got Sheffield United at home. And that's why I actually think it's the 36 fixtures that for those who are thinking of wild carding now, it makes the two teams almost unavoidable in terms of having an interest. It's part why I bought Esri Concer at the weekend, Adam. Was part thinking ahead and thinking... I'll have him as cover for the double one for as a Palace away in 36. That's okay. A player that I know is definitely going to play every game right now, as opposed to the problem with the players from the greedy six clubs is you don't know if they're going to play twice on that. Uh, by the way, at Villa and Everton, if the greedy six left would be the biggest game in the country, just in case anyone's wondering, that's my opinion. <laughs> you can come and fight me for that. History uh, tells me that I'm probably right. So that's why the, you, you're definitely going to have to consider the likes of Sigurdsson as an alternative is what you're saying. If you haven't owned Lingard for the last four or five weeks, do you really just want to follow everyone else now? Or do you want to find that Sigurdsson at 1% owned or whatever he is who, I, I mean, is he first choice on pens anyway, Sean? Yeah, it, it, look, it looks that way. Um, it's, it's not who a lot of the fans would want to be first choice on pens, but because he went through a spell where he, he, he missed the first yeah. few. He had, a, he had a brilliant record, shock horror, before he joined Everton. And then, <laughs> and then, and then Everton happened, and he was missing them all. Um, it's like free kicks. He's, he's still not scored a free kick for us, and he had a good free kick record at, at his other clubs. But hey-ho. But the thing with, with Gilfie is that as much as a lot of fans get on his back at times, the manager really likes him and really seems to trust him. And even when he doesn't start, 
he, he tends to bring him on with plenty of time left in the game. And because we're a team very much geared around creating from set pieces, you know, he, he is definitely an option. I just don't see many goals in us. That's, mm-hmm. I, I, would, I would imagine Adam probably thinks similarly about Villa. It's they don't seem to be t- obviously missing. Miss Grealish is a, is a massive, massive blow. You know, not having not having him, it affects them creatively. But I think Everton Villa is similar in in that they like to keep games keep games tight, stay in the game as long as you can, and they've got players who can who can do something and, and nick the three points. And I think um, looking at Everton Villa, are they are they realistically going to score two three goals in that many of the games? I'm I'm, I'm not. Not convinced myself. I think that's where West Ham do would come out above above the two of mm-hmm. us. They they look even with not having Antonio, they, they still they still seem to score goals. In the case of a Sigurdsson, though, one goal could very easily be a 10 11 pointer, couldn't it? That's, well, that's part what, of the thing. That's how it, yeah, that's how it's gone for him, hasn't it? He, he tends to get to get double figures. It's yep. double figures or nothing <laughs> with him. So even if you know, with like you're saying, with you know, the doubles coming up and you know, it's. It, I think I think there are worse players that you could you could get on. Um, he just, I, yep. I I I find it hard because it's it's obviously it's my you mm. know it's my team and I I tend to, to to look at us more negatively than most. You only need the VAR referee or actually the referee on the pitch yeah, yeah. that did Villa West Brom on Sunday, mate, and he could walk away with two or three, <laughs> yeah, mate, yeah. quite yeah. easily. <laughs> So, I mean, you, you're quite right what you mentioned. Right? I mean, particularly the, the West Brom was farcical. They were both soft penalties. Did, did you yeah. hear um, Peter Walton? You must have heard Peter Walton's yeah. comment in the context of the game because Villa had won. It's a penalty. <laughs> so, it's absolutely I, I, bizarre. I, I, all the stuff Peter Walton says, I take the pinch of salt. So. Everybody knows as soon as he speaks, he's going to just say whatever the decision was on the pitch. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very much um, off topic. What about Hammers, Sean? More expensive than... Than Sigurdsson, my warning on it on him is I, mid, I don't yeah. know if, I don't know if he'd be fit next week. Right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> that we, we I remember me and you were saying this when when we signed him, and I was absolutely ecstatic about about us getting him. But the, the only question mark about him is is his fitness. He he is sadly sort of made of glass. But what what I mean, what a player! He's so great, player. isn't he? What, he's great. Oh, he's just outstanding. I mean, how good it must have been to watch him. You know, in his in his prime, um, because even now he he's just brilliant. It's just worth. I I just enjoy watching us. You know, for him because he's he, he's just different class. Um, but as an FPL asset, it's you just got to have a good squad, haven't you? If you've got a, a you know a good bench, you've got decent players that can that can come in if he's not playing. Then he's worth. Um, yeah, I, I see. I'd be more. In terms of open play, you, you, you'd want Rodriguez, wouldn't you? But because Gilfie's got penalties and, and he's got the monopoly on our set pieces, I think that's what puts him ahead of him. But, you know, as players, Hammers is who's, just... Who's taking corners with when Rodriguez, Sigurdsson and uh, Luca Dean are on the pitch at the moment? Well, they, they, they've they tended to, to to mix them up a bit. They yeah. kind of they, they just shared it between them. But... Um, you know, it's it's difficult. It's just difficult, really difficult to predict our lineup. You know, more yeah. more so now because because players are you know we're getting we've obviously got Alan back, and with Richarlison being being up there with Calvert Lewin, um, you've got Sigurdsson, like I say, Ancelotti likes. I don't like um, Sigurdsson and Rodriguez being on the on the pitch at the same time because they just think mobility wise we struggle mm. and we, we're open to get you know ran all over by teams. And with Gomez, but but then we you know we played all three of them against Arsenal and we win one 0 so it sort of makes a mockery of that. Yeah, I I feel like with them all fit now, a bar obviously Decore, I feel like the back four is the best way to go. That's how it feels to me. Get back to like what we saw that game week one was four three three, and I mean, it's kind of evolved a little bit more than a four two three one because actually Sigurdsson's been not too bad the last few months, and his best position is a ten. He doesn't yes, suit him to yes, be playing no. wide left or wide right. Whereas actually Hammers from the right, he can see the picture and see the game. And he loves the diagonal. If Richarlison, who's obviously played a lot of the last few months up front, yeah. goes back on the left. I want him back on the left. Is that how you feel, Sean? Richarlison out wide? Yeah, for me, for me, yeah. yeah. I, I, I completely agree. Yeah. That 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 again against Tottenham, um, it was very, very evident. It was, you know, I was getting really excited, you know, seeing that because it wasn't an aspect of our play that we had. 
and that quick ball, that quick switch of play to release Richarlison because he's always looking for the ball nice and early. And um, well, you know, you can get him running in at goal. That's that's his, you know, his, his, his biggest asset, his biggest strength is his finishing um, and, and his work rate. Because I don't, I don't, he's getting better with his passing, but he's still not, you know, he's not top top quality with his passing. But he's he's always going to be a threat running in on goal. And we that we just haven't been getting him in those situations enough. And that's why I'd like to see. Um, you know, a, a, a more a more competitive midfield with, with, with more mobility, more more legs, get the ball, turn the play over quickly, get it to Rodriguez and get Richarlison in on goal. But you know, you can't you can't argue with Ancelotti, can you? You know, he knows more. more no, of course he does. Than, it it just us. felt a, a little bit to me when you had Hammers out the team, and then you were playing the back three with Richarlison and Calvert Lewin up front. Although the, obviously the two of them naturally carry a threat during the game. I felt creativity-wise, you were miles off yeah, in most of the really games right. I watched yeah. was a big problem unless you could get the two wing-backs really high, which obviously it suits Luca Dean, but it's not so great on no. the other side, whether it's Coleman or Iwobi's played there on occasions. So just feel at the moment, it, that the way you set up at Arsenal at the weekend, I know it was it was hardly thriller at the Villa, which we might <laughs> get soon, but I just feel like set-up-wise, that just feels a lot better. I feel like there's more capability in Everton with what you've got available at the moment. Actually, the four players who you're worried about playing, I'd play them. Yeah. I'd play them. The draws don't mean nothing to you at the moment anyway. I know you're saying you don't think it's a chance, but listen, you win all the games, yeah. mate. You've got a chance. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just, I, go I just, and try I, and win them. I just, I, just think, I just think you go with you go with Gilfi or Rodriguez, especially as like we're saying, you, we know Hammers struggles fitness-wise anyway. So, you know, if we've got two games in a, in a week, he's, he's not likely to play both of them, certainly not for 90 minutes. And I'd, I'd just be tempted to play one or the other. Um, mm-hmm. That, but you know, that's that's just my personal preference. But you know, Carlo Carlo doesn't often seem to do that. He likes he likes putting them in there. But you know, I think he, likes, Kruley, to, I think he likes to get his best players on the pitch. That's what yeah, he likes to do. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and Gilfie, Gilfie's output, you know, it's it's there, isn't it? We we bemoaned him last season, particularly me, because I, I sort of had him in my team for about three quarters of the season. Convinced he was got well. He'll come good. He'll come good soon. I feel but, like all of us started with him last yeah. season, if if memory yeah. serves me right. And it was just a case of how long did it last. I think most smart people were off by around about game week two. Yeah, um, that's, yeah, it's not me. Nice, nice to talk about Gilfie though as a potential FPL asset again, though. Actually, and I, I don't think he's the worst pun. I think it would be one maybe particularly for wild carders, but uh, it, it wouldn't be yeah. one for for me at the moment. Nice nostalgic trip. Um, Watkins and Calvert Lewin, guys, uh, both in the, the top five forwards in FPL this season, both offered great value. Seven point five Calvert Lewin at the moment. Ollie Watkins six point six. Watkins actually got five more points, but I think obviously Calvert Lewin's missed um, mm. a few games through injury, so probably basically about levelish. I think most people wild card this week, even if they don't go with one, will be thinking of getting one maybe afterwards, perhaps for thirty five. Let's debate this out, guys. Watkins versus Calvert Lewin. Where would you go? Because it's part in my fault. Perhaps next week, one or the other. I'll start with you, Adam. Thoughts? Um, I would go neither, personally. Good answer. And, yeah. <laughs> no, so, no, it's a good nod. I think. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll, t- I'll, I'll justify it because I think I think out of the two, I would go Watkins because of price and he could fit the the, the third forward spot a little bit better. But if I look at the alternatives, Chris Woods, you know, I shouted him out on last week's podcast that I did, but Chris Wood is the, is the same price. And he might have one fixture less, but he's got great, you know, in, on the whole, he's got really, really good fixtures. Obviously, Bamford's coming up with good fixtures. You've got, um, obviously, if you haven't got any action, I don't know what you're doing, but he's, he's obviously the the one to go for at that, at that price. So I, I think they're better options personally. And I think... Or you go three five two and, and and you know have the likes of Yotta, Lingard, Rafina. You know, I just I I, I personally wouldn't um, wouldn't go with either. I think the defenses of both teams are probably better ways to go. Even though Villa have been a little bit poor defensively, I think they're after Brad Friedel's record. I think we'll grind out a couple of clean sheets, and we've got the games to do it. I mean, we won't be massively surprised if Everton Villa or one of the matches was a nil nil. Um, and I think and obviously we've got Palace, so I wouldn't go with either. John, I don't know I, what. So what fixtures have Villa got left, Adam? 
So we've Everton, got... United, the rearranged game with Everton, out. Palace, Tottenham, Chelsea. The yeah, thing is, it'll I... cover you great for the double if it happens in 35 and the fixture in 36. It's come back to this again. It's not just the prospect of the 35 double, it's the fixture afterwards. Palace away or Sheffield United at home, even if you think of that as an Ian Acho owner and you think, oh, I want to sell in 36 and you can't get up. You know, say you've got two million sitting in the bank. For the first two names, you're going to think of a Watkins and Calvert Lewin again because I, of the I, fixtures yeah, in 36. I, I don't think I don't think there'll be much between those two. If it's mm. even, if it's one or the other, I don't think you could go wrong. I think they'll both they'll both score. At le- I think they'll both score at least three goals between now and the end of the season. I do. think it, I think it depends if Grealish is back as well, which is the million dollar question, and I'm not necessarily expecting him to, expecting to see him between now and the end of the season. But I think if you told me Grealish was back for all of those matches, it's an easy Watkins. Um, or you go 3-5-2 with Grealish. But yeah, I I think the, 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 I would say out of all the strikers that, that that I would probably look at is Richarlison. I think he's looked I think he's looked better than Calvert Lewin recently. I mean, Sean will be a better place to, to answer that, but I think he's looked really lively at the moment. I I think as a as a sort of as players, I think Richarlison is 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 he carries a lot more threat in the game. Mm. He's more he's more involved. Dom Dom's touches um, in a game and sort of average touches per minute really 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 low. But where Ancelotti and Ferguson have worked on him very well is getting him into the right positions. So. He doesn't. He's, he, he, it must be really tough watching Calvert Lewin when you've got him as an asset and you're not an Everton fan, because he, he he's never in the game. He's never seemingly involved. Mm. So you must feel like oh he's never going to do anything. But invariably he'll get a goal because he's worked on his positioning really really well. So I I, I would I would have Calvert Lewin before I would have Richarlison, but that's just because. I feel the team is geared towards mm. servicing Calvert Lewin that, that bit better than when we were talking earlier about you know how we'd like to see Rodriguez releasing Richarlison. We we just don't do that enough to get the best out of him. And if we were, then I, I would agree with you. I'd say Richarlison mm. would be the better, better, better one to go for. But because we're so set piece orientated, then then for me, I, I would go I would go with, with Don. But but I, I wish I'd listened to you because I do listen to your, your podcast, Adam, and I wish I'd have gone for water. I can't. I mean, it's so so <laughs> Do you know what's quite what one thing I'd like to about, about Calvert Lewin? Because it happened last season that he had a really good spell in the last seven or eight games of the season after restart. Nothing happened, nothing could happen. He didn't score, did he, yeah. at all? And it right. came an in joke, yeah. But right. it, yeah. it seems, yeah. and I haven't watched every Everton game, but it's not even getting loads and loads of chance. It, if you looked at him at the start of the season, I think almost everybody had him. Every every match he was getting a goal or assist. Might not have got a lot of massive hauls, but he was looking dangerous. And I think now you've got, obviously, Sigurdsson and Rodriguez back in the team. He just doesn't seem to... I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I think he probably is a big confidence player. The fact that he goes on quite streaky, streaky spells, it's all, all very all or nothing. But it does, yeah. it does seem, um, yeah, he probably lacks the consistency of, go, of going the whole season. Um, it's very, very streaky, I think. Thanks, Adam, for welcome, wor- saying words I never wanted to hear again. All or nothing. Cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Oh, I think... I, 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 I think... And, <laughs> you bastard. I, I, I think... And I haven't done the research on this, but Adam, here's one for you for your podcast yeah. on Wednesday, which will go out before our one, so you can nick the idea. Off oh, you brilliant. Go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd have a look at Calvert-Lewin's returns when Everton play a back four versus when they play a back three. Ah, okay. And and I, I reckon there's probably something in that. And obviously, Friday night was a switch back to a back four. And I know he was, he was quite quiet at Arsenal, but I think there might be something in that. And I think Everton will probably stay back. With, I don't see why they'd, they'd have gone to a back four at Arsenal now with Alan and Calvert-Lewin back and then switch that back up again to play yourselves, Adam. That, that wouldn't make sense to me. So I think yeah. back four, I, I think preference between the two, I'd edge for Calvert-Lewin. And part of that would be if you walked into a 36 problem, I think at home to Sheffield United, he, he really could yeah, be an outside captaincy shout, actually. Um, 
with obviously the four of the I say four of the greedy six, sorry, three of the greedy six. I'm assuming Leicester's one of the greedy six. I really shouldn't, should I? Um, with three of those clubs not playing, I, I actually think that Everton Sheffield United fixture, Calvert Lewin could be a, a, a really interesting alternative yeah. captaincy. And that's probably what would, if the if the money's not the issue, that would probably decide it. Because for a lot of people now, you're not thinking about the money so much, are you? I think if there was no. 15 games to go, I'd probably prefer to go to Watkins actually and make the saving and think, oh, I can use the 0.9. But I think if it's, if the money's not in it, I think probably Everton. Plus, there is still a need to win games. Yeah. That's definite. And you've you've spoken, Adam, about his role might even change a little bit, Watkins, possibly, if Davis is going to get yeah, some more true. minutes. I so. mean, that's what I would do. But uh, yeah, whether that happens. I'm, I'm interested. I don't know if you're going to you are going to ask this, James, but I'm interested in the Everton defence in particular. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. And um, a lot of, obviously, Luca Dean and Coleman are probably the options to go for. But are there any nailed centre-backs, in your opinion, Sean? And what are your thoughts on the... Everton defence because was Keane was Keane available the weekend? What's the no? He had a he had a, a, a small a small issue, um, but yeah. he should you he should he's expected to be back. Oh right, okay. Um, it's really this is what I mean about about Ancelotti uh, with his with his team selection. <laughs> it's just so difficult to second guess, and and we've got this. Not only do we have a lot of injuries, but we, we've got this strange sort of they never get they never get mentioned, they don't get talked about at all. And then the press conference, you know, the press conference will come round and and there's nothing mentioned. And yeah. the, the team the team gets announced and we're missing two or three players and, and you and you think, well, hang on a minute, there wasn't there wasn't even doubts about them. You know, I, I don't know what we do on the coach on the way to the games. I mean, they must they must crack, you know, be doing WWE or something on each other. It's it's just bizarre. But he should he should be back keen, and I, and I think Keane gets in over Holgate, you know, every every time. Yeah, I think Mason only played because of that issue with Keane, and like mean mean is just just very inconsistent. So he's got depends. Godfrey starts God, alongside. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's really but, good, yeah. isn't he? But yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really, really good. And well, he did well at fullback, I thought, considering it's not his his yeah. natural position. But yeah, yeah. and he's he's played left back and right back, yeah. and and he hasn't let it, you know, he hasn't let us down in either in either position. Really good, really good player. So I think I think Godfrey and Keane will be the um, main two. Yeah, main. And two. what what are your thoughts on Coleman? Is he is he worth considering? Well, Seamus is the only. I mean, this is like a damning indictment on the rest of the squad because he he's the only one that seems to offer anything on the right hand side. We, yeah. We've got nobody else that that, that comes in and, and and offers it like anything. Can you know? So Seamus is, is pretty much nailed nailed that down now as as, as yeah. the first choice because there was a there was a spell earlier in the season where you know Mason Holgate was starting ahead of him. But now Seamus is very much definitely number one choice there. I'm right. I'm rightly so, to be fair to him. I mean, could there be a case for Coleman over Dina for the money? Because I think he's he's looked okay the last few matches that I've watched. Yeah, he has. Yeah, I mean, I I couldn't. I just couldn't do it because of the you know the set piece, the set piece yeah. threat. That, and, and he's due. A, he's got to be due a goal, Luca <laughs> Dean. He scored. I think he's got four free kicks for us. Um, last season, or you know, might, yeah. I might be wrong, it might have been the season before, but you know, he's got a really good, he takes a really good free kick, and um, we are, we don't seem to have scored a free kick for ages, so yeah. we've got to be due one. I mean, I'd go, I'd go with Dean, but I don't, again, it's like you know, Watkins and Calvert Lewin, I don't, I don't really think you could go wrong, really. Yeah, you know, what's, what's cash, not the price difference? Is what's the price Dean's difference? Dean's 6.1, Coleman's 4.8. Yeah, yeah, I think. If, oh, if I, okay, that's quite a big difference. If then. I can yeah. throw my two pennies in from yeah. my own personal point of view, I'll yeah. only be considering Luca Dean. And my feeling on it is one, the switch back to the back four is not necessarily good because I think quite easily you could yeah. look at the double and go, Yeah, I'll play Holgate one of the games at right back. Yeah, we spoke Sean. I probably it's going to be over a year ago now when it keen Mina and Holgate were having a spell together where they were getting rotated for no mm -hmm. reason other than just yeah, sheer yeah. rotation yeah. and Ancelotti came out and said that himself and now you've got Godfrey on top of that as well I quite like what I've seen of Ben Godfrey I think there's, there's a too. lot of potential in him actually so I think you potentially got four centre-backs and I think when you come into a double season like we think the two clubs are going to have doubles I think the 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 urge almost oh, I'll go with a safe player, I'll go with a centre back. 
And I'm not convinced that any of them Everton centre backs are safe. And I'm not convinced that Seamus Coleman is either. And I think the only one that probably is is Luca Dean. Dean. Even but, Bickford's not safe, but, is he? Yeah. So, but if you if you really wanted to rotate, let's say Everton had a couple of bad results, we've seen Godfrey play at left back on occasions as well. Yeah. So yeah. I think Dean, if it's affordable, would definitely be worth paying the extra. I wouldn't. I personally, I wouldn't try and make the savings. I think there's too much risk there. And that's part why to come onto your guys, Adam. Last weekend, I ended up buying Consa because I did have a long look at the Everton centre-backs and I went, I don't think I can go there because when I need it to cover, like Sheffield United at home in 36, I'm not even certain they're going to play. Because at least I look concert at Mings and I go, they're definitely playing. It's literally there's no doubt about it. So where would you go with the Villa guys defensively? Yeah, I think Mart- Martinez is, 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 for the, is the obvious one. But in terms of the actual defence, I would go with... I would I like Konza and I, th- I think because there's enough of a price difference between him and Target I think and I don't think I think Target had a, a bit of a spell just after we returned from Covid who was getting a few assists and that's that's dried off so I would go Konza because I think he's due a goal and that is just purely on gut feeling but he missed a header at Liverpool he's been getting he always seems to be a little bit of a threat from a set piece he's got even though he's smaller than Mings he seems just getting you know we have some centre-backs that seem to get in the positions to get the chances he seems more attracted to the to, to the chances at set pieces so I, I would go I would go Konza but I think the way Villa are defending at the moment it's only really the fixtures and um and the fact that they've got a double that would make me tempted by them because we, we've not been defending well. And in a lot of cases, we've been saved by Martinez. Yeah, I'm, I'm only looking to use him in the double if it happens and the 36 fixture at Palace. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I've, I've probably got Conce third sub this week. It's not a particular slight on him. I mean, the, the other players I've got, like Fafana, Rudiger, Region, I, I'm not leaving these guys out with the fixtures they've got in place of a a concert this week. So I think Villa really appeal from that perspective, the defensive ones, that's why I end up going there. If you're just looking for the 35, 36 coverage, I think Villa are interesting. I think I made the decision to go concert over target, it, although it's only 0.3 difference to decide I might need that 0.3. I can't see it now, but I I don't think there was enough justification to say I should play, pay the extra for target. That yeah, was the I, conclusion I, I came to. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, Matty Cash could be an interesting one, but I think price-wise, he's still more than Konza. So, I think Konza's the the right decision there. Any love for the England goalkeeper, Sean? Are you pleased he's back, or would you rather Olsen was in goal? I think um, I think Jordan's been been um, a lot a lot better lately. I mean, I know he yeah, obviously, obviously he picked up that injury, but um, we. We've had him, you know, working with with somebody on the sort of mental aspect of the game, Good, yeah. um, and I think I think that's paying paying dividends. <laughs> I, I, he always see Jordan always used to just sort of find find a way of of getting involved in in a game where the, there was no real reason for him to get involved in, and he just sort of go out of his way to do something daft. Um, and that's he, he didn't do it for England, but but he does. He was doing it for Everton all, all too often. But but that seems to have gone. He he, he visibly seems more focused to me. Mm. Um, and, and I know a lot of other people have sort of have said that. And I think you can see it in his performances. Um, so no, I mean I've got I've got no issues with him at the minute. I mean I know a lot of other people do for the England the England spot, but I I don't think anyone's better than him. Ironically, yeah. if you're looking for a cheaper Everton defender, he might be the way to go, as in defensive coverage at 4.8. So I think having had that breakout, it's probably less likely now that Olsen gets a random game like we'd seen a couple of times. Um, and and you've got decent fixtures still, Sean. 4.8 for a goalkeeper who his best quality is his shot stopping when he's yeah. at his best. He's the sort of one that's liable to pick up additional save points, etc. So I think he, I, I would... If I had a goalkeeper problem, I wouldn't say he's the worst call, actually, Jordan Pickford at 4.8, but I would I would definitely pay the extra for Emmy Martinez if I if I had it, in fairness. Um, what would you yeah. say, Adam, to people who've got sort of Leno, Mendy, Forster concerns at the moment? Just get Martinez in, sit back and relax and wait for the points to come. Is that how it works? No. Well, I've got Mendy and Forster, and I think I'll just stick with them. Because um, I think I'll, I'll wait and see, obviously, what happens with the fallout with the fixtures, because that could change things. 
But I think Chelsea are capable of keeping a clean sheet against any, literally anyone. They can, I mean, they kept a clean sheet against City. That says it all, really. So I trust their defence a lot more than I trust stars, and he's cheaper. Um, I, 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 was, I did consider selling Mendy until Tuchel confirmed that he was still number one. Um, I think also as well, it depends on if Forster's still number one. I don't think we've got clarity on that yet because I think he would. McCarthy played the um, the following. Game. Yeah, it's it, it just did he play it because because uh, Forster played the semi final. No idea. No we, we don't know, do we? So I think if Forster plays the the next league game, I think Forster's got a couple of good fixtures at the end of the season. So I think he, I'm not too worried on that. I think I've got definitely got bigger bigger issues, Harry Kane less issues at the moment. So uh, to, to 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 resolve, um, I, th- I like your Pickford shout, and I, I think the point um, that Sean's made about him having a mental coach or support there, I'm really pleased to hear that because. I think sometimes the goal, goalkeeper is probably one of the hardest positions to play. It's quite a lonely position, isn't it? And um, I think in the past, England have made mistakes. You look at Joe Hart, quite an emotional keeper, did a lot of similar stuff to Pickford, actually. A lot of very good shot stopper, but loads of mistakes. And and he didn't really recover from that. I think, you know, you can probably look back even further. Jay, David James, a lot of mistakes in him, but loads and loads of potential. So I think if Everton have given him support around that or, or England or whoever has, that's, that's good because he just needs that calmness to his game because he's very talented. I don't think, you know, it's that concentration that he lacks. His distribution is very good. And, and when he's on his game, I mean, he made a great save at Arsenal towards the end, didn't he, that effectively got you the point. So... I, I think for England, it's it's great news, and I think um, if they can if they can calm his temperament because that's all it is. You've, we've seen he's erratic, particularly obviously the Van Dyke injury shows that how erratic. Give he is. him a Red Bull, he'll feel better, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he, I, I think that I think he's a real. I do think he's a good shout, and I think you're probably right on Olsen not coming in because I don't think they'll want to disrupt Pickford's momentum, particularly before the Euros. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I think it might fill a problem. It's just interesting one. I mean, I've got like Len- Leno and Forster, so it might be a little bit more oppressive. But yeah. for yourself, Adam, we, we, we'll both be in the same boat. If Forster doesn't regain the place, yeah, Southampton, the FA Cup final, yeah, we've, we've got we've got no goalkeeper probably for thirty six. And then I think you look at it and you go, Ah, Everton owner Sheffield United, Jordan Pickford or Martinez at Palace. Okay, Martinez, obvious. And then you factor in probably double before again. We go full circle and we go. Oh my God, I'm still considering Aston Villa and Everton players. I can't avoid it. Yeah. So, with some really interesting options from both clubs, actually. I agree. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Much appreciate that. I won't ask you to predict both games, guys, but let's predict the one that's going to happen. Is it Saturday night, the game? Yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. Go on, Sean. You're the home team, which I have now worked out. Prediction for Saturday night, then, mate. Uh, I think it will be 2 2. Desmond. Yeah, Correspondents like do like a Desmond. Go on, Adam. I, I was going to go one all. I think I think it'd be low score and draw. I'll go two one Everton, but ugly. That is what I'll <laughs> say. La- <laughs> last, last time la- I was la- on, you ugly. Yeah. I, to be honest, I've got a good record of coming on the. This. I always predict you to lose and you win, you, Adam. Yeah, I, I came on before Liv- the Liverpool game, the Fulham game. And we won both of them. So, and I think I predicted <laughs> us to lose both as well. So, uh, maybe I should predict an Everton win, and that'll. Uh, I, I, that'll I feel help. like I want to come say you came on with Chris Stone, who's on Friday's podcast. Before you played at West Ham and you lost. I feel oh like yes, I we did. Uh, uh, to be fair, we were we were pretty good on that. To be honest, was... I probably predicted you to win that one. That's probably why that. Yeah, happened. that's. <laughs> I go Everton narrowly, but I mean, with Everton's own yeah. record, it wouldn't particularly surprise me. I just think Bar de Corre, Everton. Are close to their strongest team now and yeah, there is yeah. something to go for just before we finish I'm going to put you on the spot Adam do you think Grealish will play for Villa again oh, I think he'll play for Villa again I, I, whether he plays this season I don't know he's not going to be I, back for the weekend is he is he going to be back for any weekend nah, I, won't, I don't think I, I, I really really hope so because I think he, he, he's desperate to play in the Euros and I think so Villa, are the rest of us and, and Villa, Villa are really, I think they're managing, because he had a, obviously had the setback recently, I don't think they'll take a single risk on him. So I'm hoping he'll be back for the last two or three games of the season. Um, that, you know, I mean, it'd be great if he's back when fans are in the stadium, but 
yeah, it, it won't be his last game for Villa. I don't, I don't think um, any team can afford him, particularly when they're paying fines for the ESL and all of that. So, or sacking Mourinho and yeah, yeah, yeah all running yeah. out of money. He's, aren't a, we? he's 100 million plus, so I don't <laughs> think anyone would pay it. Sean, look forward to that UEFA Conference League battle that you and I are going to be having, mate. <laughs> look yeah. forward to it. <laughs> that, ne- that neither of us want to win. <laughs> What? <laughs> until we until we're in it wasting our Thursdays. <laughs> what? So what that be if it's not a Thursday night on Channel Five? It's got to be worse than that, hasn't it? Uh, no, at least at least Channel Five was free. You got to pay for BT. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, pleasure. You can follow Sean at Spirit underscore Blues on Twitter, and you can follow Adam at A Hotcroft thirteen on Twitter, and you can catch Adam with Fergie on the Green Arrow podcast via the Fantasy Football Hub network on Wednesday evenings. What's that? You normally go live about 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, guys. As I said, Clash of Correspondents also tomorrow for you. Turfy Topper and FPL Sky Addict Burnley versus West Ham. Until then, thanks again to Sean and Adam. Cue music, please, man, child. <laughs>